It's Daniel Hall and today we're going to do the internals of a Predator 212. We've already installed our piston on the previous video. Now we're going to work inside here to get it cleaned and ready to, tie, to button up. So first thing is we have our governor, this plastic gear in the back, and two counterweights. I like to roll those to where they're horizontal and open them up. You have a flat washer that goes on the stud. Push it down. You have a plastic nipple and then it goes and then when you push it down notice counterweights will close around it and encapsulate it that's what you want next step is to reinstall a governor arm now there is a little washer that's still stuck up here from grease that's so fine you're going to feed this arm up through the hole in the block stick it out the top then there's a little keeper that you'll install there's a flat ground notch on top of this. To lay it over so because it's trying to fall out on me while I'm installing this. Let me install it and I'll show you. So right here where the straight side of the pin is, there's a flat notch. And it serves a couple of purposes. There's actually this post sticking up that prevents it from rotating too far because if it rotates too far this way, it'll strike your piston and lock up. So when you install it, remember to turn it clockwise, roll it into the, the plastic nipple so it's out of your way. Now uh, we're going to install our lifters. One has already been installed. We're going to take the other one, slide it in, so there should be two lifters here. Now we're ready to install our crank. My piston is all the way top dead center, about an eighth inch below deck. You don't want to push it too far, you'll have to reseat it. And then we're going to take the, our crank, our straight helical gear, or not helical, our, our spur gear. You're going to go in first with our tapered end. Our helical gear, our timing gear is going to be pointing outward. So we're going to go in here, careful not to strike your connecting rod and slowly feed it in because it's got a mesh with your governor gear in the back. You want to be all the way seated. Now you will roll it clockwise, lift up on your connecting rod, roll clockwise, let it sit in that seat, the journal bearing seat. Now I'm going to take my left hand here, push the piston down, seats on that surface, and roll it all around, all the whole unit around to about there where it's in the center of the bottom. Now I'm going to take my connecting rod, oil slinger arm down, again making sure that I'm clean here and I have a little bit of lubrication on my bearing surface, on your journal surface, and you can install that arm like so, oil slinger down. Now we've got our two connecting rod bolts. Go ahead and feed them in. Try to get them uh, started by hand always. You're threading a steel bolt into cast aluminum. It doesn't take much to cross thread. And then once you're cross threaded, you've essentially ruined whatever you cross threaded into because this is where the most stress is on this engine. This is actually their fail point, their, their weakest point. Um, because you're using aluminum bearings on a steel crank, when you get these units too hot, you will weld this bearing together and connecting rod will snap in the middle and come out this side of your block. That's usually the way they fail. They melt together and snap your connecting rod in half. But your goal there is to make sure you have plenty of oil in it. Oil not only lubricates, it cools. It's your only form of cooling other than air circulation across these engines and always make sure all your dust guards are in place so that the fan, flywheel fan, can do its job. Now once you have those run down, I'll take a ratchet and I'll just snug them. Now I need enough room to work, so I need to roll that around a little bit more. And what you want to do here is just get it to the point where it will actually ratchet your ratchet, just, just snug. I'm 
having to hold this socket is still really loose. Right there. Once I just feel any bit of resistance, I stop. Because now we're going to torque. So I have two style of torque wrenches here. I have a digital and I have a click style. Click style, they're simple mechanical devices. You unlock them on this Carlisle, you pull down on the bottom. Some of them you have a thimble that you pull down. You roll your handle, you tighten or loosen your handle. I have this set at 50 inch pounds. Our target is 100 inch pounds for this, these two bolts. We're going to go in one thirds. So we're going to do roughly one thirds. I, I don't get too scientific about it. I'm not going to sit there with a calculator. If I have 100 inch pounds, I'm going to go 50, 7,500. Uh, some people do quarter percents. Um, so some of them would start at 25, 50, 7,500. I'm going to start at 50 because most people by hand can get to around 30 inch pounds. And 25 is so low, we, we usually can tighten that with, uh, and when I say by hand, what you can put on a, with a screwdriver is usually about 30 inch pounds. So I go ahead and start at 50. Now on my digital, you simply turn it on, it has a LED readout, and you set it to 50. This one, again, I had to dial it in using my uh, hash marks here and my thimble that's on my handle. Notice my zero is lined up on the dot, and I'm one hash mark past 40, so that and th this one, each hash mark is counts for 10 pounds or 10 inch pounds. So on my click, I'll show that first. This is my preferred method. Um, make sure that you're good and square on your engine and you're only touching the handle of the torque wrench. Sneak up on the poundage. Don't sit there and ram that thing like you normally would. You want to sneak up on it. There it is. See my handle broke over. Y'all watch that carefully. It's breaking over and I physically can feel it give. That's the nice thing about a click style. You can be working above your head, behind your, behind your head, whatever, you can feel that thing click. Now the digital has its own benefit. Not only do you just dial in the number, that's your warning beep. Solid beep is when I hit the target. So that's 50 when it goes solid right there. Problem with the digital, they don't give. You have to be very diligent with listening to the beep. You can technically keep going past 50. It's only gonna give you the solid beep. So if you don't gently sneak up on a digital, it will lie to you. Whereas a click style gives you that physical bounce and you know you're there. Plus, you're looking at about a third the cost. No batteries needed. Um, to me, just as accurate. It's been used for by professional engine builders for a very long time with no issues. If you buy something like Snap-on, uh, that you can have your Snap-on distributor recertify your uh, device every year. Uh, some of these will have tags hanging off of them or stamp the stamped number. You can have them certified, and the truck, the actual Snap-on truck, can certify them for you. You're good to go if you're doing this professionally. All right, after I've installed all those components, again, I make sure my governor arm is clockwise so it's out of the way, and I roll this. Actually, I'm not done. I just went to 50. So now I've got to go to 75. Got ahead of myself. So I'm going to dial this one up to 75. I still feel like I'm going past my beep. I have more confidence in this. So on this one, it gets 75. I roll to my 70 mark on my main scale, set at zero. Then I need to go five more past zero. So there's two, four, five, lock it in. And here, see, it just comes more natural and I don't feel like I'm going past 
my setting like I do the digital. Plus, I was faster there. I wasn't being so skittish on the beat. I just know it's going to break over, so I'm not hesitating. So now I'm going to go to 100. Put my 100 on zero. And I'm alternating bolts. Go top to bottom, back to top. And again, this is where on the last one, be squared up on it, holding my block, holding just my handle. There it is. Go my next bolt. There it is. I don't bounce twice. A lot of engine builders sit there, ratchet up a little bit, click again. We found that if you continue to do that, you will always increase every click a couple of inch pounds or foot pounds, whichever one you're doing, and end up overshooting your target. Trust your wrench, get to that point if you did it correctly by walking it down in increments. And by the way, the reason we do increments is you're sucking one side down, then the other, and you're trying to walk it down smoothly. If I went straight to 100 pounds on one side, I may bind it on the opposite side and not actually be fully seated. So you do them evenly until you get to your target measure. Now, again, clockwise on your governor arm, and I roll this thing to see if it binds anywhere. And pretty smooth. You can roll it by hand, you're good. When I say bind, it's not all gonna feel perfect, but if you get to a point where you can't do it by hand, then you probably need to break that uh, connecting rod loose and do it again. You, you didn't seat that bearing correctly. Now you're gonna go to top dead center, which is roughly right about there. You're as far up as you're gonna get. You're gonna take your cam, you're gonna lubricate your bushing here on the end and your two lobes. I've already done that, but you dip your finger, lubricate here, here, and here. Find your divot on your cam. Find your divot right here on your gear on the end of your crank. They will line up. Again, lifters are already been installed. Now this is a helical gear, so you'll actually start below, the dots will start below each other, and because they're slant cut, this, this will roll. And then when you're fully installed, pull it back up flush, make sure they're perfectly across from the same tooth. So you're right there, they're in line. They don't really look in line when you shove that all the way down because it's a helical cut, it rolls. But they are in line if you're flush and they're straight there. So now internally, governor arms installed, connecting rod is torqued, we're done, we're ready for a side cover. So your side cover, remember you have two dowels. That's the head dowels. You have two smaller dowels. One here. One here. And your head uh, gasket, or your side cover gasket. This is not your head, it's your side cover. Side cover gasket. See how it locates on those dowels? Makes life easy, drops in place, holds it in place. Really, the important part of this seal is this bottom third. That's where the oil sump's sitting. Technically, you wouldn't even have to have a seal on the top end other than just keep dust out of it. So make sure this bottom third is not tore um, or you will leak. Then you're ready for your side cover. Now your side cover, remember you have a bearing. You have a, you have a seal, oil seal. This is a precision machine surface. Make sure it's clean. Make sure this is clean. And when you go down, you're, you're also going to uh, locate on those dowels. You have dowel holes on this side too. So don't sit here with a hammer and beat it in place. It's all about wiggling it Take, notice how I'm picking up the block, getting the pressure off the back side of the crank, and there it goes. So it's all about finding its home. Don't shove it and force it. Now you're ready to reinstall all of your side cover bolts. I'm just going to put in two here for now to hold it, but you will put in all of your bolts. 
you will torque them the same way, 50, 75, 100, and in a crisscross pattern. So when I say a crisscross, you'll torque this one down to 50, you'll go to here, torque it to 50, here, 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 here. You cross and you walk around it. Then you'll do 75, and then finally 100, and your internal here is sealed up, and we're gonna stop the video there, thank you.